we're getting the conversion rate. Uh, can you describe how you calculate it? I mean, for, uh, when you show uh, when you show the double, um, what what was the percentage? Is it just visitors of a website or? Yeah, it's it's just basically looking number of visitors to the number yeah. of people who actually. Um, so, okay, past an event. What is the talk through rate of how you call it? I mean, how many, what is the percentage of visitors that talk to uh, the agent? Uh, that's usually between 5 and 20 percent, depending on how it's positioned. So, if, if you uh, have like 10 percent of the conversion rate uh, and then 5 to 20 percent of uh, visitors talk to uh, the chatbot, mm -hmm. and then the whole conversion rate uh, doubles. That means yes. that uh, people who talk to your chatbot, they just, all, all of them uh, buy a A lot, yeah, a lot do, yeah. It sounds quite strange. Yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, they perform quite well. Um, they perform quite well, but the typical conversion rate when you get something in a chat or something is placed is around like 5 to 20 percent, but I don't actually know what the actual conversion rate into the chat robot is. It could be, it could be high, it could be like 40 percent or something. I don't know what that is because I don't have yeah. the statistics, but we have done some, sometimes when we observe it, it's going to be quite high. Well, yeah. yeah. As well. As well as giving uh, links to pages, can you know what page they're currently looking at and be contextual to what they're yeah, I'll give you an, Yeah, I'll give you an example of what that is. Yeah, yeah, we do do that. We call that dynamic messaging, where the site sends messages to the site between mm -hmm. in the background through an API. Yeah, through, we do it through JavaScript. Yeah, yeah um, really? Is that, are they surfing the same domain? Yeah, they do. Oh, right, okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, so if I just... Um, I just, this is just a demo. This is not on PNC. This is just a demo. Um, just to show you. This is, this is just a good example. So somebody comes along to like the, the bank's page, that like they load the chat window, they start chatting. Yeah. So the, the customer comes along, and um, and this just goes for a cut. Uh, it goes for four minutes. Maybe I can just I can just forward it along a little bit. Basically, what happened? Okay, I'll just bring it. Okay, so she's, so she's having a conversation. At some point in the conversation, the right thing to do is to take them through an application form process. Okay, and this is just to answer sort of Rollo's question. So, at some point in time, so walking them through a process, the person is operating on the main site. They click the continue button, and she knows that. If you look on the right hand side, she's responding to that. Right, so they're just operating off the site like they normally would. She's on makes of noise there on the field. Why? Because um the user's clicking on the link to chat to open there explicitly doing that. So, click on the social security field. Supporting them through. Reassuring them. So, hand holding them through a process, not just having the initial conversation and giving the answers. Giving the answers, profiling them, taking them through the process, improving the business, improving the conversion rate, having a happy enterprise customer, managing the and if they put in an invalid age or something like that, you could, um, yeah. you could just say, are you sure? Yeah, so what would happen there is that, I'll just turn that voice off, but what would happen there is that if their invalid data gets entered, this, this system, like this application, could send a message to the chatbot saying you know, invalid data, and she could say, well, you've been entered something invalid or something like that. Um, I saw a demo like this a couple years ago from, uh, I think it was one of the ones on the list that Erwin had, it was a company called, I think, Next IT, and uh, I saw a demo something like this where the problem that I had at the time when I was trying to implement is that this, this, this implementation requires X amount of real estate that's not already taken, and we're looking at a wide screen view with a, a small, pretty narrow yes. website, and just assuming that it just slaps in there, and I, and I have clients that, that you know, they've, they've filled out their, their browser. Yeah. 
And so we were trying to figure out, you know, right. from a technology standpoint, if they're fit within it, inside in an iframe, do yeah. other things. And I don't know if you've run into that or not, or if yeah. that's still a limitation yeah. on that. We've on thought it. about that hard and long, talk to customers as yeah. well. Can have it embedded inside, but the, the advantage of doing it this way is that it, she can load pages and do stuff, and she, and she doesn't reload, she's just there all the time. Well, there's, there's obviously advantage with this. And I'm saying, as far as backwards fitting it into yeah. a current client that I've got in mind right yeah. now, it's it's, it's going to be... Um, they would have to work they on the resistance page. They have to redesign the web page. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Talk a little bit about... I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 What the, what the back end is like, is there a scripting language? Um, well, the back, yeah, as I said, through this um, this Microsoft, group, or what we call chat flow, that's our own enterprise tool that we um, that we develop, and basically all the client only like uses that. Like, and that's basically like a um, sort of a cut and paste, um, drag and drop style of way of designing the logic flow. You know, we've got our own sort of raw sort of design. And they design that out, and that's an that's abstracted away from the actual engine or how it works. And the engine just takes that design and renders out the AI a conversation. And everything's recorded, everything's profiled, so you can see the design and the data right next to each other. Yes? Uh, I have two questions. Uh, so the first one uh, do you have uh, the statistics for the number of questions that a typical user asks? And maybe you know not just an average number, but yeah. uh, some kind of uh, yeah. We have we have very granular reports. So reporting that has all sorts of information, like top questions, where people drop out. All yeah, so so, so what's what's the average? So is it so the average number of questions? Yeah. Um, it's usually, um, I think it's about four or five, four or five interactions. And as far as the interaction is concerned. Um, what is the feedback from the users of having an animated uh, avatar or just a picture? Because for me personally, I get uh, driven away from the sites that have animation. Yes. Um, uh, for, for some reason, so if it's just an answer system, like a search, I trust it. Yes. But if it's a chat system, I'm driven away from it almost automatically, whether it's a human-based yeah. chat or a, a not to make a chat. Yeah, kind of. yeah, I mean, like, there's a certain percentage of the audience who don't want to chat to this, like, a robot type thing. Yeah, uh, just I'm, I'm just wondering if you have any kind of uh, measures on yeah. what's, what's the break. Well, what's more accepted, who, yeah. what they say. Um, no, I'm not sure if there is. We, we don't ask people, did you like the animated or do you want a static image? Or, or we haven't done sort of A-B testing on one site, have a static image or animated or no image. Um, we basically just go with what the organization like, want to do, what fits in with their, the culture of the organization. I don't have any statistics on that. And from, the from the organizational standpoint, what's, what's the breakdown? We are most want an avatar, animated avatar with voice. Okay. I'd say 80% do, and the rest want just um, a static yes. image or a logo or something. Okay. And, yeah, and, are there, and are we've made it so it's plug in and play, the chat can you from plug in and play anything. Yes. Can you say just a word about the underlying knowledge representation? Is yes, so... Um, is it uh, like... Well, okay. Yeah, no, I actually can give you an insight into that. It's basically... So when I think about platform, we've got three so three main components. We've got, we've got the knowledge, the knowledge representation, we've got the algorithms, and then we've got the design layer. So with the knowledge stuff, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a mix between what I call our conversational thesaurus. Now, that's our own proprietary design of how conversational statements relate to each other and stuff like that. So we call it conversational thesaurus, we've got that. And then we put that and like then we use stuff like um we talked about WordNet before. We don't use WordNet, but we've got our own sort of ontology sort of design, which we define and it's not just the traditional ontology, we've sort of taken it the next step to cater for conversational stuff. Um, and the algorithms use that to search and match it and, and do stuff. And where are your solutions supposed to because Many of financial organizations have very strict policies. We do. We either, yeah, yeah. We either we made it so it's a product that can install on their service, or we can host it out. 